So we haven't done anything too weird in a while. And uh, that's about to change. A viewer of ours, John, who has sent us numerous slugs before, has sent us four different kinds of slugs here, and well, a round ball. But these are made from an alloy called K100DL, or LD, K100LD, which is uh, an alloy that Kester, I guess, holds the rights to. Kester is a brand. They make mainly solder. But uh, this is a lead-free solder alloy. It's the same price as TSS. Actually, it's more expensive than TSS. This is $52 a pound. That's quite expensive, ain't it? Well, um, this stuff has roughly two-thirds the weight of lead. Guys, I'm still sick, so sorry if my voice is annoying, but we just got to deal with it. Yeah, roughly two-thirds the weight of lead. This is roughly the same weight as zinc. Close to steel, too, I guess, but anyway, this is, from what I can gather, a or an alloy made of tin, copper, and nickel. It's stabilized with nickel, which uh, I guess, from what I can understand anyway, keeps it soft. This stuff is soft, just like lead is. It's not rock hard like zinc, so uh, it should be safe to shoot through guns with chokes. I did bite one of these 525s because non-toxic, this is non-lead. Everything in it is non-toxic, so I bit it. And it did squish down pretty well. It's similar to hard cast lead. Not, it's not as soft as pure lead, but it is soft. So these should be pretty interesting to shoot. We have some Zebra Boys. There are 10 of these. I believe there's 10 of all these. We have the Lyman 525. Lee 7 8 ounce drive key. You can see this is not the color of lead either. It actually does look like zinc a little bit. Um, it's less silvery than zinc is. This is closer to the color of nickel. And a 690 round ball. And holding this, I can tell it's a lot lighter than a regular lead 690 round ball. Obviously, the Zebra Boys I have here are not segmented. It is just the Hollow Point Zebra Boy. And they are attached to a BRP-12 gas seal, brush wad, whatever you want to call it. They are attached to it with a screw. So, uh, these should be accurate out of the smoothbore or rifled. I think we're just going to shoot the rest of them out of smoothbore. We have not had good luck through a rifled barrel with any of the other three. The, uh wad pedals on target wads uh, it, the rifling tears them off and ruins the accuracy we have tried using a 12 or 16 gauge hull as a sabo in a rifled barrel for these three slugs right here it doesn't help um they're just not very accurate through a rifled barrel but that's okay they're mainly intended for smooth bore we have fired plenty of 690s through the ak-12 it's a well it has a straight cylinder bore choking it comes with straight cylinder bore and they do pretty well through it it seems like anything else i see mod full it just cuts the wad pedals once again the choke does and ruins accuracy same deal with the lee 7 8 ounce drive key they work best through cylinder bore and the lyman 525 they work okay through i see but really cylinder bore is the way to go with these sabo type slugs again that's a round ball the Panzer we shoot all the time. I've been wanting to get an IC choke for it. Turns out the Citadel Warthog came with a cylinder bore choke, not an IC. So we'll uh, stick the IC choke from it. It has the same thread patterns, Benelli or Beretta. We'll put that in the Panzer and shoot these through the Panzer with the cylinder bore choke. These will test five through the smooth bore. Again, Panzer. The other five through the Ultra Slug, which has a rifle barrel, just to see which one does better. But we don't know the rifle barrel, it uh, it throws these a whole lot better than the cylinder bore does. I mean, not cylinder bore, smooth bore. I think I messed that last sentence all up. The rifle barrel throws these Ever Boys a lot better than the smooth bores do. So, five of each. But I guess let's see what all these weigh. I'll take one of these off the uh, brush wad here and take the screw out to get the actual weight of the slug. And then I'll weigh it again with the screw and tail wad. And then we'll uh, weigh the rest of these here just to get the weights on them. And then we'll compare them to an actual 
lead version of each slug. Well, I have to retract that previous statement. I only have a 7 8 ounce drive key done up in lead. Uh, I thought I had a Zever Boy laying around, but I guess I don't. And I don't have any 690 round balls cast. So, I know what they weigh offhand. The Zever Boys weigh ounce and an eighth. The non-segmented version. 690 round ball weighs 1.06 ounces. If you're using hard cast, it's 1.09 if you're using pure lead. And the 7 8 ounce drive key is 0.85 with uh, pure lead and 0.84, or no, 0.83 with uh, hard cast. But the Zever Boy here weighs 0.82. I believe that's 13 16th of an ounce. So that's quite a bit lighter than the 1 and 1 8 ounces it should be. Moving on to the 7 8 ounce drive key, which is right here, which again should be 0.85. If it's pure lead, this now weighs 0.54. So, here is a 7 8 ounce drive key, 0.85. That is quite a bit lighter, guys. And the 690 round ball, which again, if this is lead, it would be 1.06 to 1.09 ounces. And this weighs 0.72, just below 3 quarter ounce. So, again, that's a lot lighter than uh, its lead counterpart. Now... Let's actually weigh the Zever Boy with the screw and the BRP right here it is. So the BRP weighs 0.86, might as well call it 0.89. With the screw it weighs, don't fall off. Come on, looks like it's about an eighth of an ounce, yeah. And all together it weighs 0.94, so that's close to an ounce. We'll use one ounce data for that. We'll use three quarter ounce data for the round ball here. And well, for this, uh, I guess 5 8 ounce data will work. Luckily, I have some. So normally, whenever we do these Lyman 525s and 7 8 ounce drive keys in a new way, we like to test them out through 16 gauge too because really they are very close to 16 gauge size slugs. They're just a few thousands too big. I have a 670 diameter Remington straight rifled turkey choke. It is straight rifled, as you can see here. These are 675 diameter. I just weighed them through the uh, 670 straight rifled Remington and it, you know, forms them right down to a 16 gauge slug, as you can see right there. A perfect fit. As they are cast, they almost fit 16 gauge. I don't want to push it in any farther than that or it'll be stuck and hard to come out. But, oh, that almost hit me in the foot. 525 with the Kester alloy. As you can see, they fit too, but it is tight. I need them a little bit smaller. But again, there aren't enough of them here to do that with. So this time we're just going to do 12 gauge. Sorry for the 16 gauge guys out there. One of these Everboy slugs had a small casting defect in it. So I took my knife and I cut away a little piece right there. Just to show you, this is a relatively soft alloy. It's just a fuzz harder than hard cast lead. And I know what someone's thinking. That's 10 cents worth of K100 LD you just wasted. Anyways, guys, I guess that's going to end this one here. I'm going to put these together and you guys will be seeing them in an upcoming range video. Hopefully this video will answer any questions you have, you have, but we'll explain a little bit more about them or actually the same stuff we went over here in the range videos. But uh, you can see right here, John wrote 33% lighter than lead on it. Again, that's close to zinc or steel. But yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. This should be a lot of fun, but uh, we'll catch you in the next one.